we'll now be looking at Kepler's second law, which also has a name. So after Kepler's first law, the law of ellipses, we now have the law of equal areas. And when you write out the law, it's a little bit of a mouthful. It says the line joining the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. So here we have our sun at the focus, sort of exaggerated. And let's say you've got a planet, let's say Earth. And let's say it's here at a particular instant in time. And it goes around the sun. And let's say that after some time, let's say, give it 30 days, up to you. Then after 30 days, it's gone here. So what we're really saying then is, okay, between this period and this period, the earth moved from here to here. And that covers this area in between these two rates. So that is an area. Now the Earth will continue on its journey somewhere along further down. And let's just say hypothetically, it's at some point in time here. So this time is, we don't know when this is, but let's call it July, for example. So July 1st. And that then means, okay, at 30 days after, it's July 31st. And so let's say it's here. So basically, the point is between these two times, there's 30 days as well. And between these two times, there's 30 days. So we could repeat the fact that we could draw a line between the Earth and the Sun. And then this sort of would have an area between them. And assuming that we did actual measurements and drew this perfectly, what Kepler's law is saying is that the shaded areas are equal. The green area would equal the red area, assuming that Basically, the, dis the time interval between these two positions is equal to the time interval between these two positions. And that's what this is trying to say. So that might be a little bit um, hard to see here. So we'll just do it in terms of a diagram. So let's take a look at this. Very similar thing. So we now have a mass that is the central mass, which you can think of as our sun in yellow. And you've got a smaller mass, which you can think of as Earth or any planet orbiting the sun. Remember Kepler's laws applies to all orbits, even though he was studying the sun's uh, planets around the sun. And basically let's play this and see what happens. So it's going around and basically at one second, it's gonna draw a line. And again, so at t equals three, there's a line and four is gonna come up now. And five, and then you can start to see six, seven, eight. nine, and then 10 will bring it back to where we are. And just like before, you can see this in motion this time. So maybe it's a little bit easier to understand, but we're basically saying you pick in this case, any of these areas. So for example, this area, area one, will be the same as area two. Will it be the same as area three, for example? All of these areas are equal There is no difference in size. And that's because the difference between all of them was in this example, t equals one. And it might be more obvious now that you've seen it in motion, but one thing you might wanna be thinking to yourself is, well, it's clearly an ellipse here. It's clearly sometimes further away like here and sometimes closer like here. So if the time interval is the same, 
how can the areas be the same? Well, watching this again, you've probably noticed something, which is that as it's going around over here quite far away, it's actually going a bit slower. But as it's getting closer, you can see it's actually starting to speed up. And then it's very pronounced and very obvious over here because in one second it goes all this way. And then it's actually starting to slow down again. So in terms of Kepler's second law, just like Kepler's first law, you're not really going to be tested on anything mathematically. It's a conceptual thing that you will be asked multiple choice questions on and so forth. But the important sort of result, or if you like corollary, is that the speed of the planet or satellite is not constant in an elliptical orbit. Now, we assume they're circular, in which case they are constant, but in an elliptical orbit, which is real life, they are not constant. I mean, the closer it is to the circle, the less difference you see. But if it's an elliptical orbit, then it's actually not constant. The closer you are, the faster you are. The further away you are, the slower you are orbiting. And that allows us to basically explain why this sort of area is the same. But this concept of the fact that the speed is not constant is actually going to be important to you when we get on to talking about orbital um, mechanic e um, energy, which we'll get to sort of next week. But for now, we'll be talking about Kepler's third law.